Well, everybody, it's Tony here again with Rebel Financial. We have a great guest today from Homeport, the CFO from Homeport, from Homeport Valerie, Valerie Schwarzman. I'll uh, get that out. Thank you. But thank you for coming here. This is terrific. One more um, nonprofit here in town that is really useful for people and a great help to people. So that's what we're going to talk about. Um, and I'm going to let you take that. But first, I want to know, I mean, you're the CFO. I'm always curious, you know, what is the route for a CFO and how you got there from an education point of view and a career route as well. So if you could talk to that. Sure. Um, I, uh, I grew up in Connecticut. I'm actually the oldest of uh, six girls. And I needed to get away, so I came to college out in Ohio. And I, when I was, I actually come in 1976 first as a, um, like an exchange for 2,000, you know, 200 years of the country. Okay. And it was like, oh, it was people from Connecticut had taken a covered wagon out to Ohio, so let's kind of see what that was like. And I came back from that trip and I said to my parents, this is, they're so nice out there. So I want to move out to Columbus. And so. Was this uh, high school? This was, this was in high school to go to college. Right. Right. And, um. I went to Ohio Wesleyan and majored in politics and government, went back to law school in Boston, and went immediately into um, accounting in tax. And I, I just love tax. It was kind of the law side of tax. And um, one of my first clients was um, someone who was a large family-owned business that also had a family foundation. And so I kind of learned the connection between mission and you know, making money over here and having, having some sort of charitable leading mm -hmm. um, way back when I first started working. Oh, that, that's awesome. So, well, tell us, Homeport, mm -hmm. that, so that the problem that we have um, more and more, right, is people are getting squeezed out of being able to afford living, whether it's an apartment or whether it is buying a home. Mm -hmm. And it's only going to get worse, yes. right? Uh, so anyway, so I'll, let's segue way into you talking about what Homeport does. Then. So um, when I was in public accounting, um, I used to do um, tax returns for people who um, had low-income housing tax credit projects. Okay. And in 1986, the tax law changed to allow um, investors to put money into projects that created low-income housing tax credit properties, where they would get credits on their tax returns. And so in 1987, one year later, Hope Work, or the original name, Home Housing Partnership, was born. So we've been around for like 30, 32 years. So were you part of it then? I was not. Okay. Um, I was not part of that. Um, I knew about it um, only because somehow I knew somebody who knew someone that was part of the original group that created this where um, there were some people here in Columbus, um, the Weiler family, the Kelly family. Um, there were other people that said, um, the Columbus Realtors, Columbus Foundation said, you know what? This city needs low income affordable housing. And so they created this, and I happened to just know someone who was part of it remotely. And so 20 years later, I said, oh, wait, I could work here. And so um, when they, in 1987, one of the first projects was um, people could invest in creating one of our first projects where there was affordable housing um, available for people um, that we then now have 2,500 units and um, house 6,000 or more people every day. Well, wow. and so it's just grown and grown and grown. Grown and grown. Okay. And as we see this housing crisis uh, become even more worrisome, I mean, to, to a lot of people it is, you know, we're, you're probably going to be needed even yes. more. So about how, how many employees do you all have now? We have about 40 employees okay. um, at, um, at the moment. We have about 40 people. We um, have people who develop and then um, develop the projects. Um, we also do single family homes. We actually develop single family homes and sell them. They're affordable homes in the city. And then we also um, have uh, services for our residents. So we have services, whether it's um, linking them if they have something that's happening in their life where they um, need someone to help them find a, di a different job or another job or job skill building, or if there's a health crisis, we can link them to people around the city because there's a lot of people out there with expertise to help 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 people help our residents mm -hmm. and and then the, we also have um, education where we have help people um, with financial fitness and with so personal financial fitness mm -hmm. and then also with home buyer education so if people want to buy a home okay. and I, I know how important it is because I don't think people um, who haven't owned homes know everything that's involved and and what that could look like 
like so I think you guys are providing a great service and we'll talk a little bit more about that later as well mm -hmm. so um, I, I'm curious you know when you look to build properties I mean how often do you guys have like a project going on where you're building a neighborhood or a number of houses at one time does that happen often um, every year there's something going on okay. all the time we have something going on um, the way we do a low-income low housing tax credit project is actually something that comes from Congress, comes to Ohio, and then there's this Ohio Housing Finance Agency that says this is how many around the state of Ohio get approved every year. So we do an application or two or three or four every year, and you can get up to two every year. So we have had anywhere between one and two for pretty much the last 32 years where we're building a project. Somewhere between, it could be 30 units, it could be 120 units. And then at the same time, we also could be doing something that's not part of that credit project, but with what we call workforce housing. And so workforce housing is not necessarily um, qualifying for the credit program with the IRS, but it's now where we're trying to build something where it can still have low rents for people to be able to afford based on what their income is. Okay, and how is that funded then? Um, we have, um, there's, there's, there's various, this is where the world is changing a little bit, and so the credit projects were something that the IRS has been around now since 1986. This is now, this is that middle ground, where it's like, this is where the IRS takes in, there's this area here, and then there's people who have enough money to pay for their rent and everything else. So this workforce housing, where the world has just changed when the, um, the value of your salary hasn't gone up as much as the cost of living, and so what we're doing is we're finding um, financing through either uh, individuals who say that they want to invest in something, they could put in a, a loan, they could actually be an investor. And then there's also um, other banks and, and people out there, that, um, the affordable housing trust will also put some money into things. Okay. Um, and what we're trying to do is find reduced um, interest rates okay. so that the people are still mission driven they still get their money back, they're still making a return, it's just not necessarily the return you could make right. doing something else, it's right. market rate. Right. Is, it, is it a pretty safe investment for those who? Yes, is it so? yes, it's, it's I mean it's, it's a, um, the way we do it is Homeport would guarantee the funds someone put in, right. so um, the, it's in a project, but. And I, and I know that's not the main theme of it, right? Like you said, it should be mission driven. Mm -hmm. You're not looking to um, you know, get super wealthy doing this, but you're looking to really contribute to the community and Get a little bit of return on it. Well, what we're hoping is is that an investor would be uh, taking their their money instead of options are you know stocks, bonds, etc. That people can put money in. This is a version of real estate that's slightly different, where you can either put a loan in it or put be an investor, where it's got that mission part to it, and you still get some investment or some return back, but it's also taking what I would call the corpus <laughs> and using that as an investment for instead of saying I'm just going to take the dividends or interest and give it away in charity instead you're kind of using the corpus for the same kind of purpose just in a different format. No oh, that's great and, and by the way the, the things that we're talking about here are all on the website homeportohio.org mm -hmm. right? I mm -hmm. think you got that right so um, so well and we'll come back to this at the end but but it's a really great resource to see the things we're talking about um, also, it, you know, when I look to see who you're helping, obviously there's there's renters, there's potential homeowners, but also seniors. Yeah. And so, ha, talk a little bit about that, is because that seems like it would be different than the first two areas, the general renters. And, and it, it, it is. It's a different um, group of residents. Um, the process is the same when we build. Um, it's the same um, kind of program with the IRS, but it's now making sure that we have services that are um, unique to our seniors. Mm -hmm. And um, so our service coordinators, which are the ones that help provide linkages for people to figure out, you know, if I have an issue with something or if they just have a question on something, we can help them. Uh, we also have um, at the sites, because they're, they're generally three-story buildings uh, with a community room, we have, um, <laughs> we also have That's just just we have people come in and talk about financial like financial fitness for a senior. I mean, it's just different. It's just di but they still have issues that they need to you know address. Right. Um, it it's also can be you know I've got grandchildren who you know what what what's my role with my grandchildren when they're either close or not close transportation. Um, sometimes you know they need to, not everyone has a car right. or not or where you're located is it right in the middle of you know a whole big mall maybe not. Right. So. Okay. 
Um, the, the, a little bit about the process of individuals that want door help. Mm -hmm. um, so so we're, let, let's just say the homeowner part of it, right? If really they're looking to get your help to possibly move into something that they're going to own. Mm -hmm. What does that look like for them? Um, we have two kinds. There's first like a, a first level of are you ready to buy? And so the class you can go to, it's a couple hour class, it just says, are you, uh, what is your credit score? What is your savings, if anything? What do you need? What does it take to actually be ready to buy a house? Is that their decision, or are you kind of saying, you know, hey, um, you're you not them, there yet? Yeah, you give them information, give people information, and then there's a little bit of conversation that kind of assess. This is kind of the things you probably need to do to come back to part two, which is actually the home buyer education. It's like eight hour class. Um, where it's like now you've kind of gotten yourself a little bit more because maybe I have to fix my um, credit score or I have to get rid of some of my debt in order to be ready to buy a house. And just even understanding the process of going to a bank and getting a mortgage. So we will have conversations, the initial piece, then the second piece is like, okay, now we're, we're kind of getting you ready for what you need to do. And really detailed bankers will actually come in and talk about what they're looking for when they're going to approve someone for a mortgage. What, what you, insurance. I, I don't know about you, but that wasn't something that necessarily I was taught in school. Like, what's the role of insurance and in kind of all, all buying a house? So, right, right. All those things. How that goes, yeah. Okay. Um, well, let me do this. Uh, let, let's take you to the website and go through there real quick, okay? So if we can, Christy, head to the website here a little bit. We won't spend too much time. I just want to, oh, that's not my computer. I always forget this. Um, so we'll just do this for a couple minutes just to scroll because I do want people to, I mean, this is a good place to start, right? I mean, sure. if you have an mm -hmm. interest in either side of either working with or needing uh, help from Homeport. So um, we'll, 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 let's segue into this as well while we're segueing into or in, uh, digressing into this. You have a class tomorrow, for instance, for financial uh, fitness. fitness. Mm -hmm. And so those are regular classes they are. that you have on an ongoing basis. So so even if they if people can come to these, even if they don't need your help but want to get more interested and more savvy about these things. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. So there's there's two different um, purposes. One is is that you, you just want to know it on your own. You don't have to meet any sort of income qualification. It's education for everyone. Okay. And so there's home buyer education. There's no, there's no, there's no qualification for anything except I want to buy a home. Mm -hmm. For financial fitness, I want to learn about more about financial fitness. You sign up. You go on our website, and you can sign up for those classes. Okay. Um, then the question is, is like, do you want to buy um, a home port home that we've we've bought we've um, built? Um, there are there are some of those. There's not there's not that many. The world has changed a little bit. Where there's a lot of um, we're not buying. We're not building as many at the moment. Um, but then, what is the um, what's out there? Do you need to get a, a real estate agent, et cetera, kind of out there? We're helping you get ready for that. Then the other piece is, is financial fitness um, is also um, if I just I just want to know what's I, I just want to be better at um, finance finances. But wait, I need a place to live and I want to rent something. So there's a place on our website where we can actually figure out, right, so we have third-party property management companies. Mm -hmm. You can call them and find what's available for rent. Yeah. And so that's kind of where we're, yeah. they're all connected. Okay, so coming back on this, so a little bit about that. And then here's the overview of kind of what we covered and what people do. Mm -hmm. uh, and laser focus. So so what, what do you mean by this? So when um, Homeport, we, we say how we develop homes. But the reason we develop homes is for the people. And so the, the person is the most important part. So our laser focus is we are laser focused on our residents, on people. And so our residents and also on um, the people who come to our, our classes. And so our focus is um, making sure that the reason we're doing anything is to make sure that we are helping the, the financial, um, and stabi financial stability and the um, home stability of Anyone who comes to okay. touch it. And that's your focus. That is our focus. Okay. Um, so there's that building success. Um, <clears throat> a little bit about the background and such, and some financial information mm -hmm. as well, and and general contacting as well. And they and by, they probably do need help too. So here's a good place if you're looking for work. And Absolutely. This interest you a good place. Sure. To work. Sure. Some news, of course, and then take action where you can really get involved and learn more about them. And we talked about tomorrow the finance fitness class, but 
there are other events throughout the year that, of course, they need help to fund uh, golf outing and uh, other ways to become involved as well. Yes. Yes. Uh, when was the Ugly Sweater Challenge? Um, I know some I people here at work can do pretty well. <laughs> um, it's usually this time of year, yeah. so it's right about now. Okay. Right. <laughs> where it's usually the ugly Christmas sweater yeah. or holiday sweater. <laughs> I, I learned my buddy had a, a Yuna uh, outfit yesterday somehow. <laughs> he, he drudged one up somehow. Just need so to take a picture. I, I think he's going to win on that one. Um, but, you know, as we finish up here, I, I don't think people who are comfortable in a home realize like how severe the problem is. Um, on the website, the median income in Ohio is it forty-eight thousand? Is that about right? I mean, think about yeah. that. Half of these people in this state, families, forty-eight thousand or less. Mm -hmm. Now, most of us are more. A lot of us are more fortunate, fortunate. than that, so mm -hmm. we don't think about those things. But imagine having to budget and live your life on those sorts of incomes right. and trying to figure out these problems. Because probably even in the last 10 years, if you started as a CFO in 2010, mm -hmm. right, um, the housing crisis is just kind of recovering at that time. But now we've been floored with a lot more, you know, gentrification, a lot of housing is being squeezed out. Um, so I, I'm sure that problem is growing. It's only going to continue to grow. Yes. Uh, when I, I actually moved here to Columbus in 1988. And it was considered, um, I remember going to a um, Clippers game where they had a cowbell. And um, I was like, ooh, that's interesting. Um, it's not the same place. And especially in the last 10 years, the growth that Columbus has had um, the, the, and the jobs are coming to um, the Central Ohio area where people are not making enough money to be able to afford what a lot of people can't afford. And so like, what, is, what is the ability that we have help people to be able to be in a safe, decent, affordable place based on their salaries. Right. And the, the more, I mean, renting's great for anybody, but homeowners also brings a lot of stability Absolutely. to those families. Right. So you, you make it, the sports analogy is really good because the Clippers have really upgraded since then. <laughs> um, it wasn't all that long ago that the Blue Jackets weren't here or the crew. That's true. Right? And <laughs> yes. so, I mean, that, that really goes to show how much Columbus has grown. And then yes. one of your news clips also regarding you all, you know, we're going to have a million more people here by 2050. Yes. That's a 50 percent increase. Yes, in a very and, short period of time. In a very short period. I mean, it seems long, right? But we we all know that's pretty quick, and so it's really going to put pressure mm -hmm. more and more on this housing. And we don't have the great public transportation to get people around like other mature cities have. Right, right. You and know? I think that's one of those things that as we're looking to where we're going to be either building homes or building rental units, it's where where is the best transportation, where are the best things that people can have access to, because building something in the middle of nowhere helps nobody. Right, so. Right. so anyway, so Homeport, Ohio, another great place to get involved in our city. Um, so just if you go to the website, find out how to contact them. But if you need a case, I appreciate you coming oh, on, Valerie. Thank you very, this very much. Great thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Everybody, um, I hope you're having a great December, and we will see you again next Friday. All right, have a good weekend.